Hello and welcome back to Ravenwood Acres. So today I have a channel update video. We like to do these on occasion to kind of tie a lot of the content here together and explain some of the reasonings behind the changing content here in the channel. So if you're new, this will help kind of paint a picture for you what, what type of content we create here, what we're all about at Ravenwood Acres. Um, if you've been following along, it'll help you understand maybe some of the whys behind the changes if you haven't watched every single video where you might get little tidbits of information that might help piece things together for you. Uh, so I'm going to start off a little, with a little bit of a backstory to help explain me um, and and how that impacts the content in this channel uh, because of my, my lifestyle, my, my job, but it, it's a lifestyle. Uh, we'll get there in a second. And then um, talk about projects uh, on Ravenwood Acres from uh, from you know, basically here until the end of the year and through 2013. So that'll give you an idea of what kind of content you can expect to see uh, over the next year plus. Um, okay, so me, uh, I'm a member of the U.S. Army, have been for over 20 years now. I have full intent on retiring in mid to late 2023. Uh, of course, I will be joining the civilian workforce at least for a while until hopefully I can get to where I, um, I'm working for myself or enough to with retirement income and stuff like that to where I don't have to work uh, for somebody else. Uh, that's that's freedom, <laughs> or at least as far as I'm concerned it is. Especially after doing living the military lifestyle, if you don't even ever have or don't have any experience with that, you don't get to make a lot of your own decisions. There's a lot of decisions that are made for you, like where you're going to live, you know, where meaning like what state you're going to live in, <laughs> so and what country you're going to live in. Like right now, since May of 2021, I've been in South Korea unaccompanied, which means my family is still in Washington on Ravenwood Acres. Now we could have chose to bring him here. I would have had to do two plus years to do that, and then of course it would have been the challenge of, hey, do we want to rent our house out? What do we do? We don't want we don't want to sell it um uh, although it would have been a good time to the prices man we'll get to that in a second so so that affects the content i create right because right now i live unaccompanied without my family in an apartment on a, on a military base in south korea well not going to be making much homesteading content ish uh while i'm here but this channel does have a lot about preparedness self-reliance those type of things that's why we transitioned in 2016 to Ravenwood Acres, which is what we named our property in Washington State, which is you know a home on five acres in Southwest Washington. Um, <clears throat> we made that decision when we were moving back from Nevada back to Washington because uh, I'd been working in Nevada for three years. Requested to go back to Washington, the, the uh, request was granted. Started working back in Washington State at Joint Base Lucum Corp. So we said the military. Most of them, you can request things. You don't always get what you ask for. So the tour I have here in South Korea was supposed to be 12 months because that's what an unaccompanied tour is, right? Well, I've, by the time I leave, I've been here 15 months. I had to extend, um, was manipulating the system because the Army did not want to send me back to, to Washington State because that's the Army. Uh, it's, it's, it's the lifestyle, uh, which was... We knew when we made the decision in 2016 to set roots there that that might be the case. We knew that I might get selected to go do a 12-month tour, uh, unaccompanied tour in Korea. And, um, but that was a decision we knew, and we knew there potentially was some consequences of, of this, but we wanted to give our kids more stability that, that they don't normally see uh, in, the, in the military. The, uh, kids that grow up in military families know they're pretty resilient because they, they have to move around all the time and they're always a new kid. Um, so we made that choice. If the Army wasn't going to send me back to Washington, I was going to continue to be a geo bachelor. Wherever they sent me in the States is where I was going to stay. And which, what really was frustrating us about that is financially, right, I would have had to have maintained a second household. Here in Korea, my quarters are provided for me because it was army said, Hey, we're sending you to Korea unaccompanied. So we provide you with quarters. Um, in the States, when they move you somewhere, they're like, we'll move your family. But if you don't move your family, that's on you. That's your choice. So, um, that would have removed money we could have used towards a lot of the projects we have planned 
to get Ravenwood Acres more of a homestead and get it ready for, uh, to me, to transition from like a, what I like to call part-time homestead to more of a full-time, maybe not 100% full-time until I fully retire and I'm working for myself basically on the homestead and maybe doing some side hustles or something like that with my retirement income. Should completely be able to manage, but those are future videos. All right. Um, don't want to believe that too much, but that that's affected the content of the channel, right? So while I've been here in Korea, I, I kind of re went back to some of my older video styles where I did a lot of kind of review videos of EDC lights and things like that. Uh, I started learning new skills like fermenting, so I've done some videos on that. Picked up a small a hydroponics, you know, a little tabletop hydroponics system off of Amazon. Played around with that, learned quite a bit about hydroponics. Actually kind of excited about, you know, doing that. Looking at maybe doing some sort of, uh, I'll use that system for as a seed starter. Um, but looking at building some other types of systems in the future, right? So you can still learn skills. I understand the, the lifestyle. Uh, because we talk preparedness, I understand what it's like to be a renter. I understand what it's like to be in an apartment. Uh, I can talk to that side. Uh, we didn't always have five acres, you know, to, to help help us be uh, more self-reliant and be able to grow food and raise, you know, raise our protein. So content ha will change back to more of that again, right? So our future projects are Number one, when I get back, I got a lot of work to do. If you if you own property, you understand property, you know, managing vegetation and stuff like that on your property is a lot of work. We try to keep about two to two and a half acres somewhat maintained, you know, of, of overgrowing bushes and brush. I've done all that to this point manually through, you know, machetes and, and you know, chainsaws and gas, you know, trimmers and stuff like that. My boys now are, you know, in this last few years have been old enough and, and strong enough to be able to help me with a lot of that, you know, be able to manage uh, gas powered trimmers and stuff. But a lot of time and energy goes into that. I want to put more time and energy to some of the other things. So the, the solution for me, uh, and we'll find out if, if I regret it, is goats. And I know some people will be like, oh my gosh, goats are so much work. And I, and I recognize that. I, I grew up around people that had owned goats and things like that. So I'm not just oblivious to that challenge of them getting out and causing mayhem, um, you know, eating the things you don't want them to eat um, or climbing on your vehicles, those type of fun things. Uh, <laughs> so um, we, we, there's a goat shed that we use for pigs for a little while. They had kind of temporary type uh, rope, electrified rope uh, fencing for the pigs, which worked fine with those. Note there, lesson learned, cooney coonies can easily go from livestock to pets do a whole video on that but yeah just a warning there if you're thinking about it um so i want to build permanent fencing around that structure the previous owners had two larger goats that they just used on a tie out i want something more permanent uh, and we'll use electro netting to move the goats around on the property to help manage vegetation this will help us achieve some of our goals of silvo pasturing clearing some of the areas because we're going to add more fruit and nut trees uh, as time progresses so those that will help us meet all those goals another project i got to work on before winter is so there was an existing chicken coop i expanded it i call it my solar chicken coop because we have a solar panel and one powered door and a light uh, well and the uh, other things that are powered by it i'm not going to talk about that so because it's security related uh, but um that are powered by that solar small solar system that's on there I want to upgrade that a little bit, make it more robust because we want to add another door, uh, linear actuator door to have an external run basically uh, that, that I expanded. That, uh, I want that also to be um, on a timer. So let's see. So, but when I did expand the coop, I did not take in consideration cleaning. And cleaning, you know, when especially when you got a lot of chickens, is, you know, even if you're using deep litter methods and so on and so forth, it when you actually have to clean it out, uh, it I did I did a horrible job basically <laughs> thinking that through. So I'm gonna fix that and then just do one other improvement with like a nesting box that's externally accessible instead of having to go into the coop to get at it. This will help us um, for one to help make it easier, you know, save time. And two, uh, we had some issues with um, the uh, the mites that get in the chicken feet, 
and ha hell of a time getting it under control. We're down to two chickens because that was a decision we made. You know, wife didn't want to have to manage the whole giant, like 17, 18 chickens we had um, in massive amounts of egg production. Uh, <clears throat> so we've got two Icelandics, need to get a rooster. They, they will be broody. They, they've already been broody. They've raised one of them, is, has already raised one set before. Uh, before that's why I had so many chickens. In fact, I sold some too, though. And um, but she had, she hatched, seventeen, and I think sixteen lived. Whew. Yeah, it's good mama. But uh, the um, so get the Icelandics. I like the Icelandics. They do have smaller eggs, but they do lay year round. They don't lay as much in the winter, but they do year, lay year round. So that's kind of cool about them. They are a heritage breed, so I'm trying to keep it pure. Um, let's see. Other projects, property management. So, obviously, the vegetation part with the pig, or not the pigs, but the uh, goats, that's going to help us out there. Got a couple of maple logs still on the ground that I need to get that old chainsaw mill up and running again. And well, it runs, just get it all set up and get out there and do the work and make some slabs. Probably sell some of those, make some other projects. Of course, I'll share all of this with you guys. And um, the next part is. We have, so our property is sloped. So we have one long French drain along one side of the house, which really helps with water management, right? So it keeps the water from running down and through the driveway and <clears throat> causing mayhem, you know, running underneath the house and stuff like that. The one side, because of some, you know, dirt has sloughed off, the drain rocks have gotten somewhat clogged up so that the water doesn't absorb as fast down through that system. So I need to do some fixing there, but that's also on part of the uh, the driveway slash parking area, it slopes towards the house. Uh, so I want to expand the French drain further and also change the, the grade there to where it's, it slopes towards the French drain, not towards the house, um, which will help improve everything. Because that area, when we've had some, while well, I've been gone, some major uh, rainstorms. Uh, wife even had to get sandbags to keep because it was trying to run into our workshop that's on the side of the house. <clears throat> so i got to get that under control and then the French drain will continue future projects along. That's going to require an excavator like a mini excavator. Um, did some initial pricing. I'll, I'll run through. We'll probably hold video on that. But we're looking at more of the option of financing and buying a used one um, and using it for a year because we have several major projects that I can use it for. If you look at running one for a week, um, you know, with the cost of getting it delivered and the, the, the cost of, you know, obviously renting it and getting it picked up because a lot of places will charge you for that unless you have your own truck and trailer and you can go pick it up at their, their location. It's the financing it, paying the monthly payments for a year uh, will be, it be actually more economical, even with the financing charges and things like that, the fee, you know, the interest. I should be able to, if I take good care of it, should be able to sell it for near what I used it for. I mean, you know, maybe a little less because of the hours I'm going to put on it because I do have some pretty major projects. I do know how to operate one. Uh, before I joined the military, I, I had experience operating backhoes and, um, and track hoes. Uh, so I do have the experience. I'll probably be pretty rusty in the beginning, but I'll, I'm sure it'll come back around. <clears throat> Any, So those projects are, in, you know, like I said, more food forest stuff, more trees, winter gardens. You know, when I get back, I need to get some uh, get some starts in the ground for our winter greens. Uh, you know, usually like you know, your more hardy stuff like your kales and stuff, which I can grow in the greenhouse with a little supplemental lighting. I've been doing that for the last few years and it's worked out just fine for us, except for this, the, this winter when I was gone. Um, but yeah, there's so much, I have, I have so much planned uh, and I'm super excited to get back into it and start sharing more content with you. Everything we get from this channel right now, because it's it you know such a uh, small amount, we just we dump I I dump the money back into uh, trying to get new cameras and uh, microphones and just equipment right to improve the quality of the videos um, so that I can better share what we're doing here 
uh, on Raven One Acres with all you. I, if you've watched this far, I um, uh, appreciate all your support. You can check out our website, theravenwoodacres.com. There's more information over there. You can see some of the products we've reviewed and their affiliate, associated affiliate links, which, of course, there'll be some of those down below. Also, have a great day. And in two weeks, we'll see you back on Ravenwood Acres. Thanks for watching.